I have the honor this morning of leading you all in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, so please join me, rise and face the flag, and uh, pay tribute to the United States of America, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Hand over your heart, ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Corney, um, for kicking off our program this morning. Let's give the Chief a round of applause. We are very grateful for the work that you and your department do to keep our city safe and um, keep, it, keep it all in order. Welcome to the 2017 State of the City Address. Um, it is my pleasure to be with you this morning. My name is Stephanie Caldwell. I'm the President and CEO of the Ventura Chamber of Commerce. And what a glorious day to be up here at the top of the Crown Plaza. Look at that view. Second to none, how can you not start off a great morning with a view like that? It's fantastic. <laughs> we are always happy to be here, but especially this morning, we have a really informative program. Uh, I think it will help to provide some thoughtful perspectives, not only that will shape our conversation this morning, but hopefully throughout the months to come as well. And speaking of perspectives, uh, we have a brand new partnership with the Pacific Coast Business Times. Henry, I know you're in the audience. Henry Dubroff, you want to stand up right there? Thank you for being here. Through the generosity of Henry and his team over at Pacific Coast Business Times, we have a three-month trial subscription for all chamber members. So over the next uh, few weeks, we'll be rolling that out. If you haven't already been contacted to receive your trial copy, uh, you will be receiving some information from them. So thank you, Henry, for doing that. I know he also brought a couple copies of the most recent version of the uh, Pacific Coast Business Times, and they're at the registration table in the back. So feel free to pick one up on the way out. So Ventura is a busy place these days, right? Lots of things going on. All of our businesses are hopefully doing well. We had a business walk back in December where we partnered with the city and really overwhelmingly heard that businesses are doing well. A lot of folks are hiring. Um, it's feeling really good. The economy is humming along. That doesn't mean that we're done. We still have a lot of work to do and we're continuing to work on that. And the chamber is no exception. We've been very busy these last 12 months and have a lot in store for the next 12 months. Our goal, overarching goal, is really to connect our members to the people, information, and resources that they need to be successful. And, and the you know, idea is to really drive a very strong economy here in Ventura. We do that in really four key areas, by promoting networking and visibility opportunities for our members, representing business interests to government, promoting our community, and initiating political action. This year, our board also uh, focused on four key objectives. The first one is to really reach all areas of the city, geographically, diversity, demographic, so that our, our chamber membership is really reflective of the entire business community. We also want to attract more high growth industries to Ventura. We've all heard the great success story of you know, the trade desk. We want more trade desks. We want those small entrepreneurial businesses to start here. We think it's a great environment for them to do that. We want them to grow here and we want them to stay here. So we're very focused on that. We also want to continue to work with the city to help provide some improvements to the, to the development process so that our developers and folks coming into the city have a smooth and easy process to start their businesses and, and really stay here. And then the last one is really to engage on the homeless issue. And I see Jeff Lambert and Dave Ward, uh, who were at the Planning Commission meeting last night, kind of leading the charge for a new overlay zone that's going to be coming to the city that will allow us to provide some additional homeless opportunities, homeless services. So that was the first step. We'll be back at the City Council on March 20th, so stay tuned, read the Chamber email uh, that comes out every Wednesday for more information on that as well. But I invite you to join us and really engage with us over the next few months um, in one of these areas. After all, it's not my chamber, it's not just your chamber, it's our chamber. And what we do with it together and how we work together will really shape our community. It is now my pleasure to introduce the 2017 board chair, someone who probably doesn't really need an introduction because I think everyone knows her. Please welcome Nan Drake with EJ Harrison.
It is a Ventura Chamber of Commerce Day, right? Look at this. Is this beautiful? Wonderful. We all work on lots of boards and we're very active in the community and that's why you're here. So I know you know one thing, it takes a great team to get things done and our chamber has an incredible board of directors. So at this time, I would like to ask them all to stand. And one thing about this chamber, board members don't go away, they just get reassigned. So uh, if you're a former uh, chairman of the board, would you please stand? And speaking of teams, you know, it um, takes a lot of energy, but it also takes a lot of money, right? So we are very, very fortunate that the Ventura Chamber has an incredible sponsorship team. Um, with that, I would like to introduce all of them, but please hold your applause. Otherwise, we'll be on overtime. Uh, our title sponsors are um, SoCal Gas and the Ventura Auto Center. Our platinum sponsors are the City of Ventura, Gold Coast Acura. Our gold sponsors are Era Energy, Patagonia, Southern California Edison. Our silver sponsors are California Resources Corporation, UCLA Health Ventura, Ventura County Credit Union, and the Western States Petroleum Association. Our bronze sponsors, Cal State Channel Islands, E.J. Harrison and Sons, Gold Coast Transit District, Montecito Bank and Trust, Mortgage Couch, Myers, Witters, Gibson, Jones, and Feingold, Tolman and Weicker Insurance Services, Ventura Community Bank, Ventura County Star, Ventura Rental Center. Our media sponsors are CAPS Media Center, Gold Coast Broadcasting, Lunar's Production Services, and Pacific Coast Business Times. VC Reporter, and the Ventura Breeze. And I just want to say that many of these sponsors are here today. So they not only put up their bucks, but they're active, and we really appreciate that. Again, I'd like to introduce the same kind of people, and this is our chairman's circle. They're here today, and they support us financially, and that's great. At the platinum level, Ventura Auto Center, Four Point Sheraton, at the gold level, AT&T, Community Memorial Health System, Kaiser Permanente, Ventura County Star. At the silver level, Era Energy, Montecito Bank and Trust, UCLA Health, Ventura, California Resources Corporation, Crown Plaza, CSU Channel Islands, E.J. Harrison and Sons. Thank you, Jim. Gold Coast uh, Acura. I got Gold Coast Transit, Hofer Properties, Marriott Ventura Beach, Mortgage Couch, Myers Witters, Gibson Jones and Feingold, and Pacific Western Bank, Patagonia, Southern California Edison, Swift Chip, Tolman and Weicker Insurance Services, Union Bank, Ventura Community Bank, Ventura County Credit Union, Ventura Rental Party Center, Western States Petroleum Association, and at the media level, Caps Media Center, Gold Coast Broadcasting, Lunar's Production Services, Pacific Coast Business Times, VC Reporter, and Ventura Breeze. Now you may applaud. Since you're all special guests, it would take a very, very long time to introduce all of you. So we have picked a few very important people to announce that they are here today. And again, please hold your applause. Of course, our speaker, our wonderful mayor, Eric Nazaranko, council members, Cheryl Heitman, Matt LeVere, and Christy Weir, city manager, Mark Watkins, fire chief, David Indaya, and police chief, Ken Corney. And also, I just want to point out that in our audience, we have several past council members and past mayors, and we appreciate them hanging in there with us and being active again in this wonderful Chamber of Commerce. Now you may applaud. <laughs> the Board of Education uh, members are Mary Hafner, Velma Lomax, Sabrina Rodriguez, and John Walker. 
And now I'd also like to introduce, oh, and any past board members too uh, from the Ventura Unified because they hang in there too and they don't just walk away from what they've done for years serving on different boards, um, but they stay active in the community, so I'd like to thank them also. And now the legislative representatives, representing Congresswoman Julia Brownlee, Jason Barnes, representing Senator Hannah Beth Jackson, Brad Hudson, representing Assembly Member Jackie Irwin, Jeanette Sanchez, representing our newly elected, representing uh, uh, Assembly Member Monique Limon, Angelica Cisneros, representing uh, Supervisor um, Steve Bennett, familiar name, Brian Brennan. Again, um, please, you may now applaud. I would now like to introduce one of our title sponsors for their remarks, Maria Ventura. Thank you for that warm introduction, Nan. Uh, my name is Maria Ventura, and I have the great pleasure of serving as the public affairs manager here, representing SoCal Gas in Ventura County. I'm pleased to be here with the mayor, council members, staff, and everybody here contributing their time and energy for the betterment of the city. Thank you all for being here. And also like to thank um, Stephen Cowell and her excellent team for ho um, hosting us today. Thank you so much. Let me share a little bit about SoCal Gas. SoCal Gas has been delivering safe and reliable natural gas for the past 150 years. It's the nation's largest natural gas distribution company, and we serve over 21 million customers. Let me repeat that, 21 million. That stands for the Mexican border to Visalia, and of course, the Central Coast. I'd also like to take a quick moment to introduce my dear colleagues, Olga Quinones, please wave, um, Ahmad Solomon, uh, Mark Amendola, and Thomas Kaufman. Um, they, are, they have joined us here today. The safety of our customers is our top priority in the over 500 communities where we live and work. To that end, in 2017, we are going to spend $1.2 billion to enhance um, the safety of our gas line system. One of our initiatives, one of our um, programs is called Pipeline Safety Enhancement Plan, PSEP in other words. It's a multi-billion dollar project over several years, and that program, what they um, intend to do is to test pipeline and also to automate valves. That's why you may have noticed there's a little bit more SoCal gas construction projects happening here in the city of Ventura. One of the projects, it's off of Telegraph, it's off of Mills Road near Telegraph and the other one's near Kimball. I also want to take a quick moment. All of us here obviously are here to, to, um, to enhance the business community, whether we're city, uh, local community members, members of the business community. But we also will, should take a moment to recognize our friends and partners in the um, nonprofit sector who work tirelessly to develop a better community, a place that we want to call home whether they're working towards developing opportunities for nurturing young children or environmental causes, several of them are here today. SoCal Gas is part, proud to partner with them here in Ventura, and some of my um, partners over here, SoCal Gas partners, I should say, are sitting at this table. Um, we have the United Way of Ventura County, uh, we also have Ventura Hillsides Conservancy, Ventura Botanical Gardens, and one that's near and dear to my heart, um, I shouldn't say this, we all have favorites and I have mine, um, the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Ventura, um, next year I will be the board president. SoCal Gas is committed to being a good neighbor in the communities where we live and work, and I thank you for your attention. <clears throat> thank you, Maria. And now from the Ventura Auto Center, Michael Kozawaski. Say that right, Michael? Good morning. I represent the Ventura Auto Center. I'm not in charge of it at all. I'm just an independent businessman with a car dealership in the Auto Center. I just wanted to share real quick about the Auto Center and the group of dealers that are here. Um, we're not a big um, public company auto co kind of group. We're not Auto Nation. <clears throat> we're not a um, conglomerate. We're all a bunch of mom pod dealers in that auto center. And that auto center of the 10 dealers 
combine almost does $900 million in sales every year, employs almost 800 people. Um, but more than that, that auto center gives back a lot to this community, um, individually and collectively, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars in time in support of anybody in need in charities. And I'm proud to be part of these, these guys and girls and part of this community. And um, somebody told me once, and this, and, and this group of dealers is this, if you want something, you gotta give it. If you want love, you gotta give love. If you want money, you gotta give money. If you want respect, you gotta give respect. And you want success, you gotta give success. And I think these guys and gals do that. And I'm proud to represent them. And thank you for letting us uh, do what we do. Thank you, Michael, and thank you, Maria. We are truly blessed here in Ventura. We continue to receive national recognition of, as being one of the best places to live. I think we all saw the recent moniker that we were given, the off-ramp to paradise. I think that's pretty appropriate. Uh, we have great natural resources, beautiful weather, and of course, an amazing stretch of coastline. Anytime we have the opportunity to bring together our business and elected leaders, I wanna take a moment and thank each of you uh, for, for what you do and what you bring to our amazing community. I hope that you will continue to engage with the chamber this coming year. I hope that you make new connections with other folks this morning at different businesses. And I thank you for your membership, partnership, and support. And it is now my pleasure to introduce the keynote speaker for this morning. Eric Nazarenko was elected to the Ventura City Council in November of 2013. He was appointed to the role of mayor by his colleagues in December of 2015 and served as deputy mayor for the first two years of his term. In addition to his city council responsibilities, Eric serves and protects Ventura County as a deputy district attorney, where he prosecutes child molestation and rape cases. Prior to becoming a prosecutor, Eric worked in the public education for over a decade, serving as the chief deputy to the Los Angeles School Board president and as communications director to the Los Angeles and Pasadena school districts. The son of Ukrainian immigrants, Eric grew up in the San Fernando Valley. He attended college at Case Western University, before graduating cum laude with a BA in history from University of California, Irvine, where he played intercollegiate soccer as a center forward. He received his law degree from Loyola Law School, attending classes at night while working during the day. Committed to community service, Eric has coached youth soccer and continues to volunteer as a referee. He is married and has two children, ages seven and 10, who love Marina Park, the pirate ship, diving into the Ventura community pool and eating uh, Palermo Gelato downtown. Eric and his wife Julia are members of the Ventura County Museum and ongoing season subscribers to the Rubicon Theater. I know that makes Michelle happy. Michelle's in the back of the room. So please join me and welcome our mayor, Eric Nazarenko. Good morning. Please don't hold it against me that I grew up in the San Fernando Valley. <laughs> uh, it's a lovely place, actually. I had a thought when Maria spoke. I have had this last name of Nasarenko for obviously 46 years, and I think it's time for a name change. It would be great to be known as Eric Ventura. <laughs> it would be so appropriate in my capacity as mayor, so maybe Maria and I can talk after the speech. I want to begin by thanking Stephanie and the Chamber of Commerce. I want to thank Nan and the entire board, as well as Doug Wood and the Crown Plaza for hosting this morning's breakfast. I want to begin with the title of the speech, Ventura Growing Stronger While Keeping Its Charm. Perhaps there's no greater evidence of Ventura's charm than this painting. It's entitled Sunrise Over Ventura. It's by Hilda Kilpatrick, and it captures one of Ventura's greatest assets, its natural beauty. You see here the Channel Islands in the background, San Buenaventura State Beach, and a gorgeous sunrise, much like we saw this morning. But let's start with the books. Let's look at our finances and take into account where we stand from a fiscal management perspective. We are indeed growing stronger financially. When you look at revenues versus expenditures, let me share with you the following bar graph. In 2012, you can see that expenditures exceeded revenues. 
Then, beginning in 2013, you see revenues creeping upward and exceeding expenditures. That has been the trend for the last four years. That's good news. That means we're balancing our budget, we're living within our means, and for the last four years, we've had a year-over-year -year surplus. Now, in 2012 and the four years prior, we had to borrow against our reserve fund, in part because of the economic recession and the downturn, but now, with a more robust economy, a growing business sector, and increased sales and property taxes, we're able now to have a $100 million general fund. That's the main economic engine of the city of Ventura. That's responsible for police, fires, park and rec, public works. Transient occupancy tax, also known as the hotel bed tax. When someone stays at the Crown Plaza, they pay a tax in order to do so. I'm very proud of the Ventura Visitor and Convention Bureau, Marlis Oster, its executive director, and the entire board for marketing and advertising this city and bringing tourists into it. I was on my way to a terminal at the Burbank Airport about a year ago, and as I went uh, towards the security check-in, I looked to the right and there was a Ventura billboard. And it kind of put me at peace because it was this photo of the ocean and of a surfer. And I said to myself, maybe I'm not going to go to Sacramento after all. Maybe I'm just going to go back home and spend the day in Ventura. But what this transient occupancy tax chart tells you is that in 2009, we're taking in about $3.8 in hotel bed tax. Look at where we are about seven, six years later. We're almost at six million. The point being, we're bringing in more tourists, we're increasing our revenue. Measure O. I want to do a specific shout out to the Chamber of Commerce and its board. It is not easy for a Chamber of Commerce to get behind and support a sales tax measure. I get that. But the Chamber of Commerce, under the leadership of Stephanie Caldwell, said this is good for Ventura. When streets are paved and street medians are landscapes and trees are trimmed, that attracts and courts business. And I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce and this entire community for standing up and getting us $11 million more in revenue for the city of Ventura. Now that you clap, let me tell you the bad news. <laughs> Beginning April 1, your sales taxes will go up. Uh, right now, you're at seven and a quarter. It'll go up to 7.75. But when you go to Lowe's or you go to Barnes & Noble or however you spend your money, remember, that extra 50 cents is going right here. By law, it has to remain in the city of Ventura for designated expenses. What are some of those expenses that we anticipate in the near term. What are we going to first do with this money? The tax will be imposed April 1. We'll begin collecting it July 1st. It comes in quarterly installments. We want to attend to our infrastructure. Obviously, after the downpour, our roads are in tough conditions, but we have a crew daily out there attending to the potholes, but nonetheless, we need more revenue. So what we will do immediately with the Measure O dollars is we'll take care of street repaving. We're also going to take care of buckled sidewalks, which cause problems and also poten potentially litigation risks, and also we'll attend to street medians and tree wells. We also made a commitment as a city council to maintain and operate Fire Station 4. That is at Telephone in Montgomery. The purpose of doing so is that the East End needs rapid, efficient paramedic response. And I know Chief Endaya is here. Fire Station 4 has nine paramedics who are also firefighters. They provide some of the best emergency care in Southern California. We had been supporting them in the past with a federal grant. That federal grant expired. We are now going to absorb the cost of Fire Station 4 into the general fund budget funded through Measure O dollars. It is with great pride that I tell you about three medical establishments, all of which 
will open in 2017. Let's begin with Community Memorial Hospital. I want to talk first about the parking structure. As most of you know, it is already open. But, you know, Gary and Adam, in their wisdom, they said, how can we make this parking structure a community asset? So what they did is they created a 571 capacity parking structure, and they said, we're going to give a third of that parking structure to hospital patrons. We're going to dedicate another third to the public, and the final third to economic development, to nearby businesses and their patrons. That's smart. That's good for Ventura, and that's good for Community Memorial Hospital. It's also exciting to see this new hospital take shape. Just to give you a preview, 230 hospital beds, a larger emergency room, an expanded operating room, and also additional private patient rooms. Very exciting, and we're looking forward to the opening this year. It's also a pleasure to announce that the new hospital wing of Ventura County Medical Center will be opening this year as well. It will be a premier leader in acute care, obstetrics, neonatal, and pediatric intensive care units. We too are looking forward to the opening of this hospital wing. And it's also a piece of pride to see Kaiser taking shape. Many of you, if you traverse the 101 freeway, you see this building. And this is a 7.6 Kaiser Permanente medical suite component with an urgent care built in. This is basically to orient you where market becomes Valentine, parallel to the 101 freeway. This too will open in 2017. Why do I mention this? Because these wellness establishments, these medical corridors are bringing in high paying jobs, they're providing health care to our residents, and they're also good for the city of Ventura because they show that we can expand and grow and bring in more bricks and mortar buildings into our city. I want to talk first about Patagonia. Uh, Shauna Epstein and I were in Washington, D.C. Uh, about a month and a half ago, we were trying to secure federal funding for a water reuse plant. And when you're in D.C., you're, you're, you're talking to committee people from North Carolina and uh, Oregon, places that obviously are well beyond Southern California. And when we go in, we want them to instantly recognize who Ventura is. And what we tell them, it's the home of the worldwide apparel giant and environmental steward, Patagonia, and their eyes light up, and they, they have an instant recognition kind of, of what Ventura is all about, and I see Dean Carter here, and I just want to acknowledge Dean and Patagonia. I know that you have been a longtime chamber member, so thank you. Um, they are growing, incidentally, by the way. They have purchased city and county space for the purpose of expanding Patagonia. We welcome that, and thank you for doing so, Dean. Yesterday, I had an opportunity to tour the trade desk. This, too, is a source of pride. They have offices in London, in Hamburg, in New York City, in San Jose, and Hong Kong. But guess where their corporate headquarters is? Right here in Ventura. You go in there, and this, by the way, is a worldwide online ad giant 500 plus employees, 91 of whom are off of Chestnut. They too are growing and expanding. And by the way, if you haven't gotten their stock already, you may be a little too late. They had an IPO at $18 a share. I understand as of yesterday, it was about $44, $45 a share. So they are growing. They're traded publicly on NASDAQ and we want to help them expand. They are looking very uh, strategically at the space across from their existing headquarters behind the Century Movie Theaters. The City Council is very interested in seeing if that is a proposal that we can bring forward and continue to consider. The other day I got my car serviced at the Toyota dealership and I said, I gotta go buy this place. I just wanna see what it looks like. And if you're on Auto Center Drive and you turn right on Perkins, 
and then you look to your left, and there it is, the new Volkswagen location. They are moving, with the assistance of the city, from their current location on Main to basically Perkins and King. They're gonna have new service space, they're gonna have a new showroom, and this is a piece of valuable real estate that we are glad to see will be a home to a new auto dealership. That'll create more synergy with the other dealers, and it's also something that I believe the city is very much committed to nurturing and seeing grow. This thing is really cool, um, and I see Jim Friedman here who helped make it happen. Portside Ventura Harbor. Jeff Lambert, our community development director, also instrumental. Uh, this is a long time coming, 16 years. This is 200, and Brian, I see you there as well on behalf of the port. This is 270 for rent apartments, 30 live work. It will have 21,000 square feet of commercial space. But you know what I think one of the coolest things about this is? They are gonna have water taxis that will take people across the harbor to Ventura Harbor and back. So, you know, you're living at Portside Ventura Harbor and you want to go over to Brophy's or wherever, you can do so in your water taxi and then come back to where you live. This is really exciting. I think we anticipate this will be done around 2018, 2019. And then also, it's great to have good grocery stores. Um, you know, Sports Authority, went bankrupt nationwide, but in its place, right next to that Barnes and Noble on telephone, we have Sprouts. They're anticipated to open this spring. Now the more sobering part of the PowerPoint. You know, any, you're all business people, you understand that you have to forecast a little bit and you have to plan for economic strain and stresses. You also have to be aware that the good times don't always last. Like most cities, counties, school districts, we contract with the public employee retirement system. They are a behemoth. Outside of the federal government, they are the largest pension plan in the United States. $300 billion in assets. Our employees and our employers pay into the public employee retirement system, and then upon retirement, that system pays them out. When we give them money, they invest that money in the market. And they have told us historically that we're gonna guarantee you, school district, city, an assumed rate of investment return. That assumed rate of investment return if you can see it, is 7.5%. However, they have now said, guess what, government entities, don't count on a 7.5% investment return any longer. We are gonna downgrade the amount of money we think we can get by investing in the market over the next five years from 75 to 7%. So what does that mean for cities like Ventura? That means we have to make up the shortfall somehow. If the public employee retirement system is saying, we're gonna be giving you less, we have to come up with that difference. So what does that look like financially for the city of Ventura? And by the way, this isn't just the city of Ventura. This is all school districts and many cities and counties as well as state agencies up and down California. A Little hard to see, I'll walk you through it. What this looks like is, right now, we're paying $16 million from employee and employer contributions into this retirement system. That's 2016, 2017. Now, you go forward five years, and it's anticipated that we'll have to pay $24.2 million. As you can see, that is a significant increase. That's about $8 million more. The good news, ladies and gentlemen, is because of the fiscal management of our city manager, who is aware of this issue, has worked with his finance director, Gilbert Garcia, we believe, based upon what we know right now, we are able to absorb this additional cost 
and not have to take away from any core services. But nonetheless, we have to recognize that this is a stress that is upon us. It will create pressures on our general fund, and we have to continue to deal with it responsibly. How have we done so already? Let me tell you. Our employees pay their full, their full contribution into the public employee retirement system right now. Depending on where you sit in your employee bargaining unit, that's either 6.25% or 13%. The other thing is, unlike other government entities, we do not pay lifetime medical. That's a significant cost that causes strain to many cities, but it's one that will not burden us because we have no ongoing responsibility upon retirement to pay that retired employee health care. The other thing, frankly, is recessionary pressures. I like this graph, and if you can, focus on the gray bars that go vertical in nature. You see in 1980, there was a economic recession, oil embargo, the Iranian hostage crisis. And then about 10 years later, another economic downturn, the aerospace bust, uh, the savings and loan crisis. And then fast forward another 10 years, 2000, we had the tech bubble burst, and then eight years thereafter, the economic subprime meltdown. What's my point? The good times don't last. And we all recognize as businesses and as economic forecasters, we have to acknowledge that there will be, most likely, another economic downturn. I doubt the Dow will continue to hover at 21,000. So we, as an institution, as a fiduciary of that institution, have to continue to build our reserve capacity for that rainy day. As I mentioned before, in that last economic downturn, we had to borrow from our reserves. What we are doing right now is we are putting money back into them. The industry standard for a city of our size is you need 60 days of expenses covered in your reserve account. Where are we at today? 45. We need to get about 15 days more of money into that reserve fund, or about $4 million. Through the leadership of our city manager, Mr. Watkins, and our city council, we are exploring setting aside every year a certain amount that will go into the general fund so that it will replenish itself and will have adequate reserves if there is an economic downturn. When we talk about stresses on our economy and our quality of life, we have to acknowledge the homelessness issue. And I believe personally that in order to address homelessness, we need to create homes. It will surprise you somewhat when I show you this next slide. This is a count of homelessness city by city in Ventura, and pardon me, in Ventura County. And as you'll see, in 2007, about nine years ago, there were 588 homeless persons counted in the city of Ventura. When we go forward nine years later, it's about half, 300. But when you talk to your friends, or when you go on our streets, or when you just traverse downtown, it doesn't feel like we have 300 fewer. 300 or 400 is simply way too many. We as a city council recognize that there is a need in this city for crisis housing and sheltering. And through the leadership of Mr. Lambert, we have identified a manufacturing and industrial area that could accommodate this potential shelter. Let me walk you through this slide right now. You see the green. That is land designated right now under our zoning code that could accommodate a shelter by right. They don't even need a permit. They could just move in there. However, as you can see, this is limited. It needed to be broadened because nobody up to this point in time had dedicated land, repurposed a building, or built a structure for the purpose of housing the homeless. So what we have done is we've expanded the space within this geographic zone. 
where a crisis shelter could be housed. But we've also acknowledged that one of the reasons there were no takers up to this point is that we needed a change in our zoning code so we could co-locate and coexist services with housing. The idea here is you put mental health, job training, substance abuse, federal, uh, uh, federal assistance with programs in the same place where you're housing individuals. The concept is up to 55 beds. It would have a dedicated intake center. It would be staffed 24 hours. It would have showers and facilities where people could change. It would bring humanity to many of these individuals, much needed housing, and it's also good for business. Because when we hosted that meeting at the South Coast Fellowship Church, where we drew in, thanks to the Chamber and our Community Development Department and Peter Brown, the business community, they said, we'd rather have individuals housed than in our alleys, on our door wells, outside on our sidewalks. That's not good for our customers, and that's not good for our business. As you heard last night, the Planning Commission unanimously approved this with no dissent. Very exciting. And we anticipate that this overlay zone that Stephanie talked about before will go before the City Council on March 20th. I'm going to pivot here. I'm going to go into a different topic. This is about the relationship between the city and the chamber, which is such a great relationship. And I want to highlight a little bit about that relationship and what it looks like. Let's begin with Taft Electric. They helped our traffic intersections. They helped in terms of supplying contracts and construction to new water pumps and wells. And they received in the last three years, and they're a chamber member, $4.5 million. We're also very proud to have a robust relationship with Ford of Ventura. In 2016 alone, we purchased 12 Ventura Police Department vehicles from them. And of course, one of the title sponsors and a longtime friend of Ventura, E.J. Harrison. But it's not just large contracts that make this relationship special. It's also individual vendors. We're going to talk a bit about Home Pride Carpet Cleaning in just a moment. We've given them 31000 in the last three years. But also, we have an ongoing relationship with the wharf. Many of you know the wharf on uh, Front Street. Uh, we spend way too much money there, personally, as a family, on horse gear for my daughter. But that's another story. <laughs> uh, but let me, here's what I talked about before. This is Ford Aventura. Uh, we purchased those 12 vehicles from them, and then they turn into these great police uh, uh, vehicles with lights and siren. And then I mentioned Home Pride. This is the owner of Home Pride. They have been a chamber member for many, many years. They're an ongoing contractor with the city of Ventura, and their product is in clean and nice looking carpets. You know, one of the things that we do on behalf of locally based businesses we give them a small preference, which we're allowed to do in the law. Let me give you an example. Let's say we get two bids. One comes in at 100 bucks, the other comes in also at 100 bucks. We, by law, have to take the lowest bidder. But we give to a local-based Ventura business a 5% credit. So what happens? That bid now is $95 as opposed to the out of area that's 100 and that $95, if qualified, would get the bid. That's one way that we want to encourage a positive relationship with our business community and continue to contract with them. The other thing that is a source of pride for us, I talked about the trade desk. It started here with literally one desk in 2009. This is the 505 Poli Street. It's the building adjacent to City Hall that we purchased from the county about a decade ago. But we have within the 505 Poli Street what's known as V, uh, it's the Ventura Ventures Technology Center, V squared TC. And it's an incubator for tech companies. It helps to grow and establish new economic frontiers in our city. And I want to mention one of them. There's an online company that started here a couple years ago called Giddy Up. 
they have now moved out of the technology center and they're downtown, they have 10 employees, and they're gonna grow to 25 in the near future. We're very excited to continue to encourage the tech industry and any other economic ventures that wanna make a home in Ventura. Stephanie and I had a, a breakfast meeting and we talked about this and it was a great conversation because it tied into one of the goals of the city council and that is, how can we do a better job? Any business has to be introspective at times and ask themselves, what can we do that's more accommodating for you? So the plan was, let's go ahead and bring someone in from the outside who will look at two processes. One, let's explore the process by which a business is seeking to secure space, a business license, and other uh, regulatory steps to establish a foothold in Ventura. And then let's also look at a developer and the process that they have to undertake in order to get their development built and a permit approved. So that's one of the things that the city council wants to do. Let's be open and say, hey, what does this person say we can do better as a city to help streamline the process for businesses as well as the one for new development projects? And speaking of economic engines, I see representatives here at the Ventura Auto Center. There are two proposals that are very exciting. One of which is expanding Olivas Park Drive. For those of you who know, if you take Olivas Park Drive, you're um, going towards the Auto Center, it basically ends unless you want to turn left on Perkin. The idea is to expand it so that there's continuity of the road and then to connect it to these back lots over here in the auto center. And the other thing, frankly, is you can't be a major destination for auto sales if you're unable to market and advertise. And that is why the auto center is proposing a digital billboard that will be alongside the 101 freeway um, and it'll be visible to traffic. It'll help bring more customers into our auto center. It'll help us compete with Oxnard and Thousand Oaks. And it'll also market this as a destination for automotive sales. We look forward to that proposal and considering it very um, aggressively. Someone once said to me, the time to talk about future water supply is when you're in the middle of a downpour. <laughs> so, you know, we look at this recent spell of rain and we ask ourselves, we're doing okay. Well, yes and no. Let me give you kind of the answer uh, through these two slides. February 7th, this is before the large downpour of uh, February 17th. You see through the U.S. Drought Monitor the conditions of drought in all 58 counties. The red is Santa Barbara and Ventura counties. As of a month ago, we were the only two counties in the entire state that were classified as still in extreme drought. Why do I mention water? Because water is necessary for economic growth. You need it to develop, you need it to grow, and you need to have a reliable and safe supply for your customers. Now, take a look at this. Let's go forward about a month. Here we are, February 28th. We're no longer in an extreme drought. However, if you look at this map, you'll see three counties out of California's 58 that are still classified as in severe drought. Santa Barbara, Ventura, and Imperial. We're not out of the woods let yet, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We still need to take into account that our water supply is fragile, it's limited, and we need to look beyond our existing sources in order to grow. So what have we decided to do? One, we have had an ongoing contractual agreement with the State Water Project for 45 years. That basically is a placeholder. It's a right for us to take water from the State Water Project. What is the State Water Project? That's water that comes from the Delta, um, the San Joaquin Delta, as well as the Colorado River. It 
flows primarily through the Metropolitan Water District and it services many Southern California communities, uh, some here in Ventura County. But I talked about this contractual right. We've paid for it, we've used it for 45 years, yet we don't have the infrastructure to actually physically take the water into our city. So what the city council did a couple months back is we said to Ms. Epstein in general and, and uh, the Ventura Water Department, how do we tie in to the state water project to give us an ongoing supply and so that we can finally exercise this contract and take water. There's a study that's being undertaken. The notion is that we would have that inner tie somewhere in SOMAS, and it's very exciting. I mean, obviously, it's subject to capacity. That means there are other water agencies that will compete for that flow, but nonetheless, this gives us another resource that right now here in Ventura, we cannot utilize. The other thing I want to share with you is the water reuse facility. Right now, there are many, yeah, everyone's, <laughs> Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, this was not in the water you're drinking right now. But at some point it may be. <laughs> and as you can see, uh, Shauna and Cheryl and, and Mark, they're all doing fine, despite uh, the water that they uh, used at this facility. Here's kind of what's going on, just big picture. We take reclaimed water, that's wastewater, and we use it primarily for irrigation purposes. We pump it back into fields, it goes into golf courses, but in 2017, the technology is so advanced, so state-of-the-art, that you can use reverse osmosis, ultraviolet light, and membrane filtration, and actually create a drinkable water supply for your customers that's even purer and safer than what we're consuming right now. You have to get beyond the yuck factor, I get that. You're always asking yourself, well, where did it start? I understand. But what you re realize, and, and the UC Santa Barbara Bren School did a study, is that when you educate Venturans about this concept, they will accept it. Now, this will be a shock to all of you. They don't want to hear the mayor talk about reuse water. They want to hear scientists. They want to hear people that work in labs. They want to hear physicians and doctors, people who can say, hey, I know what this water is all about. It's safe to drink. It's gone through the regulatory approvals. And I really believe that this is the future of water supply in California, that we have to harness what we have already and bring it back to our customers as safe, reliable drinking water. Stephanie mentioned our acclaim in Sunset Magazine. We are the off-ramp to paradise. And I want to tell you a little bit about what that off-ramp looks like. One, it's just its charm. The gateway to the Channel Islands. You walk along Harbor Village, uh, home to one of the largest calamari fleets in the nation, and also just a picturesque, scenic place with coastal breezes, fine restaurants and shops, and something that we continue to look towards and partner with. And then the Ventura Botanical Gardens, and I see Tracy here right now. Yesterday when I was at the trade desk, I actually saw people leaving the trade desk and then running up towards the Ventura Botanical Gardens. But this helps not only market the city, but it also creates wellness and healthy lifestyles because people can take that gradual walk up the Ventura Botanical Gardens. They can look at the poets and the quotes that are laid at some of the benches. And when they do so, they can look back over their shoulder and see an enormous view of the historic pier as well as the coast. We look forward to continuing to work with the Ventura Botanical Gardens. For those of you who don't already have it in your calendar, I hope you will all be at the St. Patrick's Day Parade, which kicks off 10 a.m. Yes, and I see Nan, our host. <laughs> you know, this is a part of what makes Ventura so special. It's families, it's community. And when you talk about families and community, you have to recognize that when you have an outstanding school district, when you have a K through 12 public school system that the public is invested in 
and cares about, you have an outstanding city. Last week I went over to Lincoln and I, I read as part of Read Across America Day and I always felt, just based on my old days in education, how do you tell a great school? Well, you walk in and you see teachers caring about students and parents and faculty doing the same. And that's exactly what I saw at Lincoln. And I see uh, a number of school board members and our interim superintendent here, and I just want to acknowledge and thank the Ventura Unified School District. I'm almost done. <laughs> uh, I'm going to finish with these last two slides. Uh, Stephanie mentioned that my wife and I have been ongoing season subscribers to the Rubicon. If you haven't seen it already, take a look at the Bessie Smith um, show that's there right now. If you love the blues, she was a famous blues singer from the 20s and 30s. It's an outstanding show. It'll be there through the 12th this Sunday. But I saw Brian here and Michelle. This is a community gem. I will stand this Rubicon Theater up against the taper the South Coast Repertory, uh, the New Vic in Santa Barbara. I mean, they have first class shows that provoke thought, emotion, and bring together the community. And I close with this slide. This is basically what we're all about. You know, I just love the, the hope and the inspiration in this photo. And I leave you with it because think about Ventura as you leave today and you look outside and ask yourself, what a magnificent place I am living in right now. Thank you all very much. On behalf of the chamber, we, we really look forward to continuing to work with you, Eric, and the city to help accomplish those goals. And we hope that you will continue to let us know how the chamber and the business community can engage to make sure that the city is reaching their goals as well. Uh, well, that brings us to the end of our program, and I would like to say thank you to each of you for making the time to be here this morning. I think it's important to be engaged in these kinds of discussions. Again, I hope that this is the beginning of a discussion, not the end, and some of the thoughts and Ideas that maybe were discussed this morning can continue to resonate throughout the community in the coming months. If you have ideas how you'd like to engage either with the city or with the chamber on some of these areas, please let us know. That's what we're here for. Um, I'd also like to thank Doug and the, all the staff here at the Crown Plaza. We love the renovation. It's beautiful. Thank you. You always do a great job. Lunar's Production Services for making us look and sound good. I know it's not always easy. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Caps Media, who is a great partner um, and films the event as well, uh, so that folks who aren't here can see it later. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank my staff. Um, it takes a team to put these kinds of events on. And in addition to all of our sponsors and support, it's, it's my team that really works hard behind the scenes, and I'm very grateful. Uh, so Becky Haycox, our uh, events and programs director. Thank you, Becky. <laughs> Jessica Perkins, our office manager. <laughs> Ashley Pope, our membership development director. And our newest team member, Sam Dyer, who handles all of our front office. Thank you. Um, a couple of housekeeping items. If you parked in the Crown Plaza parking lot, the flat lot out on this side, the gates will be up for you. And then if you parked in the city lot that is uh, the multi-story garage, the arms are also up. So you can just head right out. Make it nice and easy. And um, lastly, um, Nan wanted me to mention again the St. Patrick's Day Parade. <laughs> so I always do what Nan tells me. And uh, if you are out and about Saturday morning, go grab a cup of coffee and come watch the parade. The chamber will be in the parade this year. We're number 24, so we're towards the beginning. So come out and root us on. We'll have a number of our members uh, also in the parade this year. Thank you very much, each and every one of you. Now go out and enjoy this beautiful day. Thank you.